The mission of the Max Planck Institute of Molecular Cell Biology and Genetics is to try to understand how cells form tissues and organs. We study it all across the different biological scales, meaning that we study from the little molecules up to the organism. That implies that we are using different types of model organisms, from Drosophila to C. elegans, but now we are incorporating new models. In particular, we are incorporating organoid models. And that means that we are now able to study how cells form tissues in different tissues like the liver, but also brain, as well as placenta, pancreas, and also from the very early embryo. Our own research on the liver, actually, it's based on our major question, which is to try to understand mechanistically how tissues are maintained, how tissues repair, and what are the mechanisms that go wrong in disease. We've discovered that for the tissue to activate the regenerative program, it requires to modify its epigenome. But also we've discovered that now we can model some diseases like liver cancer. And now we have good models for liver cancer in a dish to investigate potential drug sensitivities for a liver cancer treatment. And we're trying to expand this knowledge to other organs as well. Each organ has a certain shape, and this shape is important for its function. And in the pancreas, uh, the shape is the form of a tree, yeah? and uh, along this tree, the progenitors are in the trunk, and these cells are polarized, both apicobasally yeah, and also in the plane. Organoids are, are very convenient to study how cells act as a community, because you can control the community itself. We observe they assemble into spheres and they start rotations, or they elongate and de they deform, uh, depending on what we start with, and it's important for this, their differentiation. We can control the initial architecture and look at the outcome on fate. Uh, we can also screen for any compounds that would change the outcome. The MPICBG is a unique place because we have the organoids, the model organisms, and a strong core of theorists, including mathematicians, physicists, computer scientists. And these people, in collaboration, can help us be more quantitative, but also develop theoretical models whereby we can test a lot of parameters and compare what we observe in real life, what we observe when we just simulate it. That gives us a lot of power. For the past 25 years, we have been concentrating on genes that make the human brain big, bigger than that of other primates. And we actually were lucky to identify such a gene called rgap 11 b Interestingly, this gene is equally present in Neanderthals, where we try to identify differences in brain development between modern humans, us, and Neanderthals. We can show that Neanderthal progenitor cells, which make the neurons, make more errors in distributing their chromosomes to daughter cells than modern humans do. We identify a gene where there is in the protein a single amino acid change, and when you express that gene, then more neurons are made in the brain. And interestingly, that other gene is present particularly active in the frontal lobe, which is where our cognitive abilities reside. Most of mammalian, so mouse human development, occurs uh, inside the womb, and that we are severely limited in understanding how the mammalian embryo shapes itself. To overcome these limitations, we and others uh, develop methods to coax pluripotent stem cells to form embryo-like structures or embryonic organoids. For this, we coined the term stembryogenesis. Yeah. And for our lab in particular, this means that we can study mechanical and chemical inputs, how they interact uh, with each other to shape and pattern an embryo. If you take embryonic stem cell aggregates and you subject them to the right culture conditions, they have this amazing capacity to self-organize into so-called gastroloids. Now, what I discovered is that you can supplement these gastroloids with an extracellular matrix compound, and this now unlocks embryo-like architecture, and this results in highly complex structures that not only molecularly, but also morphologically, really look like the embryonic counterpart. Essentially, what we generate in a Petri dish are structures that look like an embryo without a head, and that also form in a process that is highly analogous to in vivo development. In my lab, uh, we investigate the development of the placenta, which is an essential uh, organ for proper embryo formation. Placenta development requires a crosstalk between two uh, different uh, organisms, the fetus and the mother. In the lab, we try to recapitulate these interactions in vitro by mimicking the uterine microenvironment, where we grow the fetal stem cells using organoid culture systems. 
The goal of my lab is to study placenta development across scales, from, from molecules to organisms. This concept fits very well with the mission of the Institute. Moreover, the diversity of groups and approaches at the Institute could help me tackle my research question from different angles, such as evolution, disease, but also mathematical modeling and biophysics. The future of the organoids, of harnessing the power of organoids to investigate mechanisms of disease, is that it allows us, in one hand, to organoid models faithfully recapitulate many aspects of human diseases, in particularly genetic diseases, but also complex diseases like cancer. Having a model that recapitulates better the human disease, it gives us a platform to find treatments for these diseases, not only to understand the mechanistic level, but also find potential drugs to cure some of these human genetic as well as non-genetic diseases.